right, so what we're gonna do in this problem is we're gonna take some object of some mass m. Now, I don't care what this thing is. We're gonna take this and we wanna shoot it off up into space at some velocity v. And we're actually gonna shoot this off up into space fast enough to where it escapes the pull of gravity by the Earth. Now, when I say this, this object is going to escape the, the pull of gravity by Earth, really what I mean is it's never going to fall back down. And this is a strange idea, because if you're standing on the, the surface of the Earth and you throw a ball up in the air, it goes up and it comes back down. If you throw it up a little higher, it goes up and it comes back down. And so people are under the impression that no matter how fast you throw something up, it's always going to come back down. And that is in fact not true. So today we are going to investigate what's called escape velocity. So in order to understand escape velocity, first what I want to do is take a look at the force by gravity on an object. Now we know the force by gravity on an object is given by Newton's law of universal gravitation. It's a gravitational constant times the mass of some central object times the mass of some other object we're dealing with over the distance between them squared. Now the fact is these two masses could be any objects we're dealing with. Today I want to deal with the central object. We're going to say this is the Earth for now and this probe we're shooting off into space. But this force by gravity is given by this equation, and we can graph this easy enough. Force by gravity versus radius, and we see a curve that looks like this. This is proportional to one over r squared, and it's always negative. We say it's always negative because the radius vector is positive outward, uh, so the force by gravity, which is inward, is going to be in the negative direction. So on the surface of the Earth, there's a certain force by gravity. Uh, and that force by gravity would be mg on an object. Now, as that object moves farther out into space or farther away from the center of the Earth, that force by gravity approaches zero. And so, in looking just at force, this whole idea of escape velocity seems a little bit strange and possibly even wrong, and I'll explain why. If we throw something up in the air, no matter how high up in the air it goes, or no matter what radius it reaches, there will always be a force by gravity acting on that object. And if there's always going to be a force by gravity acting on that object that has some mass m, then that, for, that force is always going to cause this object to be accelerating back toward the Earth. So no matter how high we throw something, it will always be accelerating toward the Earth. And at first when I say that, it seems to completely go against this idea of escape velocity. But I want to go one step farther, and rather than just talking about the force by gravity, I also want to talk about gravitational potential. Gravitational potential is given by the function g m m over r. Now, if you want to see this derived, click up here, and you can see the derivation of gravitational potential energy as it applies to Newton's law of universal gravitation. Now, if we were to graph this function, it looks almost just like this other function over here. On the y-axis, we'll have potential. On the horizontal axis, we're going to have radius. And these graphs look pretty much the same. Uh, the difference being this is proportional to 1 over r than, rather than 1 over r squared. So again, if we look at something on the surface of the Earth, there's a certain potential associated with that height. Um, and this could be any value, it would simply be a function of the object's mass and of course the radius of the Earth and the mass of the Earth. But there's some potential at this height. But what I want you to realize is there's a finite amount of increase in potential this object could have as we lifted it upward. Or to put it differently, let's make up some numbers here. I'm just going to say some very tiny object right here on the surface of the Earth has a potential of negative one. It's negative because all objects always have negative potential. We can't actually have positive gravitational potential energy per this equation. No matter what I make a value for radius, uh, there's always going to be a negative value for potential. So if an object had one joule of potential energy, what would happen if I threw it up in the air with two joules of kinetic energy? As it moves up, as any object moves upward, we know it's going to exchange kinetic energy for potential. And if I was to throw something close to the Earth upward slowly, or at a reasonable velocity, 
it would go up, it would eventually run out of kinetic energy, it would all be converted into potential and fall back down. But going back over here, let's say I give some object, a very tiny object, negative one joules of potential energy on the surface of the Earth, and then I threw it upward with a kinetic energy of two joules. Well, that means gravity can only ever do a finite amount of work, that is one joule of work, on this object as it moves upward. So even though gravity will always be pulling on the object as it moves upward, gravity will only ever be able to do one joule of work on the object. That is because the greatest, the potential can ever be is zero. So if an object moves from a radius here on the surface of the Earth out to infinity, not beyond, gravity will only ever do one joule of work on that object. Now, if we change the mass, of course, that's going to change the, the amount of work gravity could do. I'm just trying to illustrate there's a finite amount of work gravity can do on an object, and that is the difference between the initial potential and zero. So, the math behind finding escape velocity is actually pretty simple. Uh, all we do is we just use the work energy theorem. By applying this situation to the work energy theorem, you can see the initial kinetic energy, one half mv escape squared. Now remember, this mass is the mass of our little probe we're shooting off into space. It's not the mass of Earth. Uh, the initial potential is going to be this term right here, that's negative g m m over some initial radius. I'll just call this ri. Uh, I don't want to call this the radius of the Earth because realize this can apply to situations other than making things leave the Earth. Now in this problem, we're saying there is no atmosphere. This really applies once we get outside of the atmosphere. We're saying there's no air drag, there's no friction. So really we're shooting something through the emptiness of space. And the importance there is we want to be able to say that our non-conservative work is zero. Now the final kinetic energy, this one's a little bit weird. We are okay with this object stopping. Now I know you said, wait, hold on. We're trying to shoot this thing infinitely far out in space. And that is true. I'm fine with this object stopping once it gets infinitely far out in space. So the final kinetic energy is zero. And I'm saying, but, but wait, doesn't that mean it'll stop? Yes, once it reaches infinity. So in all practical terms, it's never going to stop. Now the final potential, it's easy enough to see. Our final potential is going to be negative g m m over an infinite value that makes this zero. So in putting all this together, what we wind up with is this term and this term. With this, if we rearrange this for velocity, what we find is the escape velocity is given by this function right here. And there's nothing particularly profound in the math of this function. Uh, but it's, it's really important to realize there is a finite speed at which we can shoot something upward into space such that it will never come back down. And that is because even though gravity will always be pulling on the object and always be accelerating it back toward the Earth, there's only a finite amount of work gravity can do on that object. So what we see is if we shoot something up into space fast enough, it will go infinitely high into space. Uh, and this, this is not simply a mathematical deriv derivation or possibility. This is a reality. If you look at something like the Voyager probes, which were fired back in uh, the 70s, 1977, uh, these were shot up into space. And while they took a trip around the sun to speed up and gain some energy, uh, ultimately they were fired out into space fast enough such that they will never, ever, ever come back down. Uh, today, there's something like 11.7 times 10 to the ninth miles out into space. Uh, that's 11 billion, almost 12 billion miles away. That's an enormous value. Uh, so, this is the derivation of escape velocity. This is something that is completely achievable. Uh, realize 
relative to the Earth, the escape velocity is roughly 11 point, I think it's two kilometers per second which is an enormous value, however, completely achievable with modern engineering. So the escape velocity goes to show it is possible to throw something up in the air fast enough to where it will never come back down. And on that note, that's all for now.